class three uh, leadership and high performance team. And uh, we continue with module one. And in module one specifically, we're going to talk about what is a team. Point one point two. What is a team? Theories and definitions. It is important to define exactly what uh, everything you do has to be defined uh, previously of doing it. I mean, we talk about teams. We, we talk about groups, high performing teams and groups and stuff like that. So definition is something that has to be uh, obviously there up front. Because if not, we're, uh, in, and you're leading a team or you're leading a group, and uh, if you don't have this definition very clear to you, then what are you leading, right? So what is a team? A team is basically defined as a group of people, of course, who in a way perform very, uh, uh, in this case, th this is important, perform interdependent tasks to work towards accomplishing, right? a common mission or a specific objectives. Some teams have a limited life. Some have long lives. Some are there forever. Some are there just for a, a, a bit of time. For example, a design team developing a new product, a software, let's put it this way, or a continuous process improvement team organized around to solve particular problems that arises once in a while. Main ends, is a, is a, a, a continuous process improvement team, but uh, solving a, a bug in a software very specifically probably is just a short living team. Others, other teams are ongoing teams that are, are there uh, constantly in, a, in an entity, in a corporation, a factory or whatever, such as a department team that meets regularly to review goals, uh, activities, and performances. An organization with many teams require careful alignment because uh, then the problem with teams and many people is that you occur on redundancies. Redundancy is uh, by definition when many people do the same thing. And that's one thing that cannot happen because it's costly and it's uh, not effective at all. As teams and individuals link with other teams, you know, they got together. Uh, the principle of developing understanding and trust will apply, which is very important. But the structure will get more complex. So many teams, as you can see actually here, let me just get my pen. Many teams, uh, basically this is uh, this is a diagram um, expose what re in reality happens a lot. I mean, different teams organize in companies. And this is exactly the organism of any institution. If you think about a hotel or a, a, a lawyer's buffet, you know, they all have this situation happening all the time. So you can actually see here, understanding the many interrelationships that exist between organizational units and processes, yeah, and the impact of this relationship on quality, productivity, and cost makes the value of teams very, very important, very apparent, okay? So it is basically the relationship between teams and leaders that create the, the, concept, the, concept, the constant, I'm sorry, of a working relationship. Many of today's teams concepts gained popularity in the United States during the 1970s. Uh, using quality circles, you know, this quality concept came up on the 70s when the companies uh, uh, suddenly they didn't uh, realize that they were just mass producing and quality was something that they didn't really consider. So in the 70s, in the United States during the 70s, using quality circles, they created these circles which were there in order to improve the quality of such a process or such a product or, or employees' involvement initiatives. However, these initiatives that arise in the 1970s, uh, in the decade of 1970s, these initiatives were often seen as separate from normal work activities, not really as an integrated with the normal work activities. So uh, they got together once in a while in order to check something that was not working right. But then companies, <coughs> I'm sorry, started to create teams as part of the organization of any company. Team design have since developed 
into a broader concept that includes many types of teams, many different types of teams, depending on the objective, formed for different purposes. Three primary types of teams are typically uh, used within the business environment that you need to know. So three uh, types of teams within the universe of produ uh, productivity companies. Okay, let's, let's go for the first process improvement teams, okay, are project teams that focus on improving or developing a specific business processes. Uh, and they get together in order to check a process, let's say a production process that is redundant and uh, with many uh, inefficient uh, uh, sessions of parts. So process improvement teams are like that. They form in order to uh, manage and better uh, a process that already exists. These teams come together to achieve a specific, very specific goal are guided by well-defined project plan and have a negotiated beginning and a negotiated end, okay? So this is, uh, we call them, you know, process improvement teams. Then we have uh, work groups, sometimes called natural teams, okay? Have, this, this type of teams have the responsibility for a particular process. As an example, a department, a product line, uh, or a stage of business process specifically, and work together in a participative uh, environment. So this is uh, the work groups or natural, also called natural teams. And then we have work groups or natural teams, the degree of authority and autonomy of these teams, of the, the same one, the work groups, uh, can range from relatively uh, limited to full self-management. Okay, the participative uh, approach, uh, I mean, they have people participating from different departments, from different areas in order to work something out. Let me give you an example again. Let's, let's talk about a hotel where you have uh, uh, a work group or natural team working into um, the uh, betterment of the uh, uh, host lobby, you know, or the kitchen or the pool or the activities that they, the, the, uh, the guests have. So they get together from kitchen, from hosting, from maintenance, from uh, uh, human resources, from maintenance, whatever, they got together and they start working as work groups or natural groups. The participant approach is based on the belief that employees will be more productive if they have a higher level of responsibility for their work. So they share the leadership of these teams. This is very, very important. Uh, the responsibilities also include processes, traditionally held by managers, okay? Such as goal settings and uh, allocation of assignments or conflict resolutions or uh, even uh, finance and, and budget, budgeting and, and uh, forecasting and stuff like that. So again, these self-management teams are in a way only with high level managers that are uh, working together. Uh, here, the, uh, the leadership of this type of teams uh, lies on the, uh, the group itself. So they chair the leadership of the, of the group every time. Self-managed teams directly manage the day-to-day -day operation of their process or departments. They are authorized to make decisions on a wide range of issues and uh, such as safety, quality, maintenance, scheduling, and personnel. Okay, so these are, uh, uh, you can actually see here self-management teams and you can see coaching here, solution of problems, setting of goals, support for areas that require like IT, collaboration, their, their skills, motivation, and training. So it is a, a wide variety of concepts. I'm gonna repeat this because it is very, very important that we uh, know exactly the three types of general teams, okay? So uh, the, um, the three types of general teams, okay, we have process improvement teams, 
I want you to remember this. So they get together basically for a period of time in order to better a process that is already there in the institution, the company of anything that there is. Then we have work groups or natural teams, which are constantly there. Okay, they call national team. They have responsibilities for a particular process, which is maybe an administrative process. For example, a department, a product line, or a, a, or a stage of business process or whatever. Then we have self-management teams. They also uh, last not for long in order to better something that is not working properly or the allocation of assignments, goal settings, um, forecastings, budgeting, stuff like that comes and lies on these types of teams. Okay, and um, an example of administrative team roles, this is, this is another type of team. Administrative professionals support their organization with a wide variety of services to free management or administrative detail. These administrative team roles are the roles of certain people to be part of, of a department within a company, within an institution, within a hotel, or a, a or a, any 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 entity for that matter, a club, whatever, and they come together as 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 a team with others. Typical administrative uh, duties include scheduling meetings, uh, making travel arrangements. They are in every company handling written, telephone, and electronic communications, maintenance records and creating a dis, uh, distributed report. Many, many things that can be done on that matter of, of this uh, administrative team roles. Roles, not team, roles. When, when I say roles, is I mean everybody, uh, the role of this person, the role of this person, okay? So the teams are the ones we already uh, talk about and then they have the roles. I, I uh, came up with this concept a long time ago, and this is something that I teach a lot. It's ex uh, and I call it examples of administrative team roles. And I came up with this donut, donut uh, uh, concept. I believe very strongly that in every company, in every entity, in everything that uh, is out there, we have uh, the people that create uh, the demand of the service or product, the people that sells, the people that uh, install, the people that have, that create this demand. Let's say, uh, if we're talking about the University of Anahuac, we will say that uh, there are people uh, capturing, there are people uh, exploring the possibility of new students coming to, to the university. This, this is called demand generation because you are part of the service that the, that the university give you. So the demand generation people stands for all of this part of the, of the donut, okay? Here are the clients and suppliers of the university in order for me to make it clear for you. Behind this, you have the support of this demand. So you have demand generation and demand support. And in demand support, you have all the HR administrative parts, all the leadership of the deans and the uh, president of the university, the rector and all these people that create the administrative. And all of this is how this university stays afloat, okay? If anything happens here, then the university goes down. If the support is not enough, every effort of the demand generation people falls apart. So this is how in reality any entity works, okay? Now we're gonna give you several examples of this, okay? Let's start with different types of teams that are very specific in their nature. Let's talk about project teams. Project teams are assigned to work on well-defined projects with budget, schedules, and specific end dates. So they stay, the project teams stay for a period, short period of time, okay? And this is very interesting because it has to do with the fact that uh, uh, many companies such as, let's say, lawyers, uh, architects, and, and um, doctors, 
and accountants, they do are pretty much project teams because they work in, in very specific projects one by one. When this project is accomplished and it ends, the team ends as well. So project teams are assigned to work on well-defined projects with budgets, schedules, and specific dates. So they're not uh, ongoing at all. It's just part of that. Project teams, uh, administrative project teams have objectives such as updating a customer service, call centers, as an example, sourcing and purchasing ergonomic chairs, I mean, furniture for the programming department or investigating a customer complaint trend. Okay, so project teams are pretty much like this. Uh, they may be assigned by projects by managers, executive or administrative services managers. So this is uh, the universe of uh, project, project teams. Remember, project teams work in a very specific concept and they disband or dissolve when the project is completed and they reunite when the project arises again or a new project comes to light. Then we have cross-functional teams. Cross-functional teams are the most famous now, the most common of, of, of all of them because of many uh, uh, advancements in, in digital technology. Cross-functional teams are better in many ways. Cross-functional teams are formed with administrative professionals from across the entity, the company or the institution or whatever, whose expertise is required for a spe specific objective. Let's say that the University of Anahuac launches a new division, a new school. So in order for them to really achieve this goal, they have to call uh, professors, uh, faculty, uh, maintenance, administrative, and maybe even religious area of the university, they come together uh, uh, in construction and architects and you know all these people come together in order to check the feasibility and the capabilities of every, all of them in order to produce a new school or a new subject or a new project or a, or a new uh, degree, something like that. So cross-functional teams work like that. Cross-functional teams members are borrowed from their respective, as I was saying, work areas to come together for a goal such as developing a better work process for a new product, as I was telling you, for a new school, for a new, uh, let's say, uh, for a new festival, something like that, or service line or creating a collaborative marketing video for new accounts. I mean, all of those things work in cross-cultural function teams. And and the, the team members of this type of teams, you know, uh, attention during the workday is split between whatever they do on everyday basis in their own departments and uh, jobs. But then they have some time during the week in order to perform a very specific cross-cultural, uh, cross-functional team uh, activity. And then we have what we, uh, after the uh, pandemic situation came to be very, very, very present and very important, which are the virtual teams. Virtual teams have been around forever in reality. Technology has, in a way, pushed uh, their importance uh, right now um, better and much better. But in reality, virtual teams have been there forever. Virtual teams are made of professionals in different geographical locations who meet and work electronically uh, through Zoom, through email, through teleconferencing and video conferencing in order to achieve something together. Virtual teams are cost-effective because uh, you don't have the, the people, I mean, I'm cost-effective for the university because I'm a virtual professor. I, I'm, I'm working uh, 3,000 miles away or more from the from the area where uh, the company that hires me to do this, virtual teams are cost effective way to harness the expertise of a scattered professionals. Scattered professional means professionals all over the world. When it would cost more to bring them physically together than the value of the project itself. So it wouldn't make a sense for these uh, people to come uh, and travel to, let's say, Cancun for that matter, in order to do something for a couple of days or three days, because we do have the, 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 the technical advancement to uh, work uh, virtually. 
then uh, this virtual team often can produce the same results with less expense than other groups. But basically, virtual teams, more, more than anything else, is the fact that you can get uh, valuable people from around the world in order to be there for you in a very specific project. And then we have what they call self-directed uh, work teams. Self-directed teams or self-directed work teams are composed of experienced individuals with similar or the same duties who are brought together to get work done as a group with a little or no supervision. But this is very important because it is only for very specific high level type of work. And uh, so they, they, why are they self-directed? Because they're good at what they do on the very specific expertise they have. So they just talk through each other and get together and work in a, in, a, in a very specific project. For example, individual executive assistants working for the company vice president may be assigned to a self-directed work team to better coordinate executive calendars, travel arrangements, and budget reports for a convention. Let's say that uh, different assistants from the, the different areas of the university or the hotel or the uh, uh, factory, they come together because there's going to be a convention. So they have this expertise in their own areas and they bring together their experience in order to put together this convention situation. Such teams often work uh, without direct daily supervision from anybody because they know exactly what they have to do, but they still are subject to performance standards and evaluations as well, of course, because if something doesn't work at the very end, that would be a problem. Then we have another thing which is which is important. It's called committees and task forces. You have heard of those. Uh, the government uses a, a lot of this. Co uh, committees and task forces are like project teams in reality, in that they are assigned to address a specific objective, but are more focused on researching and analyzing a problem to make recommendations for the best course of action on a very specific concept that they are aiming to resolve. So they call them committees or task force. And task force is a very interesting concept, task force, because uh, it is... Uh, in reality, it's a concept brought from the army. You know, task is a force, is a group of people tasking something very specific in a very short period of time in order to solve it. The army and the navy and have this type of uh, groups. Committees work as tasks that require ongoing attention. Committee comes from the world coming together in reality, such as a continuous improvement of safety. Let's say that a company, let's say the hotel has a, a problem with uh, some cash expenditure that is out of uh, regulation. The, I mean, they're bleeding money in a very specific area of the company. So they, uh, they have this committee of accountants and financial people and performance people getting together in order to solve that cash bleeding. Of, of the entity specifically. So improvement and safety and task forces are formed to address specific concerns such as product bug. This is very typical in IT companies, a recall cars and uh, or, or a workplace problem. So these are uh, things that have to be addressed properly. So we have a recap, a recapitulation of this, of everything that we have so far uh, talked about. This team formats, team formats, uh, process improvement teams, okay, uh, work groups and natural teams, self management teams, project teams, cross cultural teams, visual teams, and self directed teams, and as well as, and the last one that we talk about, committee and task forces. Okay, with this, we end our class number three, leadership and high-performing team, class number three. Thank you very much.